this is the tonguing plane. Uh, it is a companion video to my last one, which was the grooving plane. Uh, in the grooving plane, I covered a lot of how I turned this log firewood into the blanks for the tongue and groove planes. So I'm not going to cover that as much, but basically I uh, flatten out one side, bring it to, to 90 degrees on the other side, flatten that side out, and that allows me then to, to cut out the two blanks for this. Uh, it was a fairly simple process, but uh, if it's something you really want to see, then I would definitely suggest you go check out the grooving plane video. And I'll leave a link for that in the top right. Now once I had my blank out, I could cut out the shape of the tonguing plane with a Stanley 45. This could also be done with a chisel very easily. As a matter of fact, I actually did that with my first grooving plane. And uh, if you want to see that, I'll actually leave a link to that as well. Now with the tonguing plane, I need to actually create the profile in the iron. And that means I have to put a quarter inch cutout in between the two sides of the tongue. And this is a fairly simple process, just a little bit more labor intensive than I had anticipated. I just used the file to slowly grind away what I didn't need. It took me about 20 minutes, but uh, with some patience it came out. This is O1 tool steel and I go over the hardening a little bit more in the other video as well. But basically I bring it to a cherry red or to the point that the magnetism um, disappears from it and then plunge it into oil. It's a O1 is oil hardened. Um, after a course of tempering then it's ready to use. Now to cut out the bed for this iron, uh, first of all I set the iron at 45 degrees and make a mark on either side of it. And then I'll put the wedge on and make a mark of exactly where that wedge is at. This gives me the spot that I know I need to cut out. I can use a saw and uh, cut it down to the depth of the iron. So the, the thickness of the iron determines how deep down I cut. Now you have to be careful removing the waste that you don't go too wild, but because this is, this is three quarter inch deep, I could actually go at it fairly aggressively with a chisel and not have to worry about that. Then I'll take it down with the chisel, pare it out, and then bring it with a router plane. Now this is the part that I kind of glazed, glazed over with the grooving plane. Uh, this is the wall that the wedge will seat against. And I actually like to undercut it a little bit so that the wedge is drawn into the body of the plane. And this is fairly easily done as long as the chisel is sharp. You can just angle back that wall. And then I'll do the exact same thing on the wedge uh, to make it fit that uh, make it fit that angle. It's a little bit tedious of a process to work that in and make sure that they fit, but once you have a, a nice fit, it's uh, it's a really solid connection. The tip of the wedge needs to be cleaned off so that the chips have a place to go when you're planing it. And once you've done this then it's ready for testing. Uh, it's blocky and it's painful to hold, but you can actually make sure everything works. I ended up having to take it back and adjust several things just to make sure everything was, was tweaked and running properly, but particularly to make sure it fit with the grooving plane. The wedge then can be fully shaped with a series of saw, rasp, file, and uh, chisel to give it that really nice traditional wedge look. Once that's in, I like to test it again, and here again I found I needed to tweak it a little bit more. Uh, it just wasn't quite running as smoothly as I wanted, and most of that was just the, the obvious things of uh, moving some wood here and there. The body, then uh, it's ready to shape it, and this is, a lot of people make this more complicated than it needs to be. It's just uh, making it to the shape that feels good. So I'm constantly going at it with the chisel, the rasp, and files, and then feeling it. Does it feel good in my hand? And that's all that I'm really looking for in its shape. Does it feel good? Is it something that I, I don't mind grabbing and using? I finish it with a coat of boiled linseed oil and paste wax, and I just like the look of that. I love real boiled linseed oil. Now for my maker's mark, uh, I made this branding iron a while ago, and I love using it. It's just a, it's a fun tool. Now the final test. I have a 
another piece that has the groove made by the other plane and now I can make the tongue on this one and fit the two of them together. Each one of those curls you see is actually two curls intertwined together from either side of the blade. And it's just beautiful. I love how it came out. The matched pair now works together and both of them are perfectly measured so that they will create a board that fits with whatever the other plane creates. Tonguing plane. So this has been a very cool project for me. Um, I really kind of enjoyed making this, uh, this pair. Uh, so you have a, a grooving plane and a tonguing plane. And when you put them together, you end up with this uh, matched pair that can then fit together. Um, they're kept tight, so there's a little bit of tolerance. If you want to loose them up, you can. Um, but with the right work, they go together and you end up with a really nice tight joint right down the edge. Uh, it was a really fun project to work with. Um, I ended up with a little more issue on the tonguing plane than I was expecting, but most of that was just making sure that everything is perfectly matching to the grooving plane because all of the measurements have to be dead on in order to make the two of them fit. And by George, they fit. Uh, so this is a really, this is a really, really cool set. And I'm looking forward to sending those off to my friend. Um, he has uh, been a huge encouragement to me lately, and I hope I can be slight encouragement to him. So that is the, uh, the project I have so far on this. The tonguing plane, I tried to go a little bit more into the detail on how to actually create the, uh, the slot here. Um, so that will give you a little more information than I did on the grooving plane. But in the grooving plane video, um, I tried to do a little bit more about making the body and the shape of it. So uh, if you want to see one or the other, uh, feel free to check out the grooving plane. I'll leave a link right over here. And if you're in the grooving plane, go ahead and take a look at the, uh, the tonguing plane. These have been a, a pure joy for me to make, and uh, I hope they are uh, I hope they're loved by their new owner. So that's about it for today. If you liked this video, please hit the like button or subscribe. Feel free to ask me any questions you have in the comments. I do respond to every question that I get, and I really want to hear what you have to say. If there's something I could do better, please let me know. Till next time, have a wonderful day.